talked a lot about the enormous growth in data because of connected objects. But I want to put that into context because context is my business because I'm a practitioner. If you look at the red line, it's connected people. That red line is you and me and this. Now imagine the level of innovation and the trillions of dollars in value that have been created because of the red line. The Airbnbs, the Ubers, the blah blah cars, the Amazons. This is the red line. The green line is IoT. That is the simple reality that everything in this room is now emitting data. From the simple little light switch that we turn on, the plug that I charge my phone with, and everything else in the room is now emitting data. The value of that data is unknown today. This is Google 30 years ago in a lab in Stanford having no idea what to do with the internet, but they're playing. Today, this data exists, growing exponentially, and we have no idea what the real potential of it is yet. And every startup, I can tell you, between the labs at Schneider, every engineer we have in the world, and the startups that we spend time with in the building space, everybody's trying to get their hands around one small piece of what that could mean in terms, of, in terms of value. Second, if I go to the next one, I'll just talk a second about this. It's one thing that all the old technology in buildings creates data, right? the light switch. But we also have to think about the new technology in buildings. And I can tell you, I work in one of the most sustainable buildings in France. It's up the road here in Rouet. It's almost carbon neutral. Almost. We produce 90 plus percent of the energy we need with the building. We have a new building that launches in Grenoble later this year. It's net zero. We produce more energy than we need and we give the back rest back to the grid. What I can tell you though is everything in terms of sustainable buildings is this idea of en plus. Okay, so the design of the building is we have a building and en plus we have to do a bit of sustainability. Let's throw some solar in there. Let's try and manage the energy consumption with some sensors. It's always an afterthought. The next generation of buildings will be designed from the ground up with geothermal, water management, sensors everywhere, solar, wind, rain, on and on it goes. So when I think about the sustainable building of the future, I don't believe we even have an idea what this looks like yet. Because it starts with the idea that you're creating energy from the structure. You're using data to optimize it and improve and improve. Now, if anybody knows anything about the electrical grid in terms of how far this changes the paradigm, electricity is a one-way one road. You produce it, it delivers to a building, done. Buildings of the future become their own producers. Your house in the future becomes a producer, which means when you design a smart city, you have to think about things in terms of a grid where you can provide energy to your neighbor, you can sell energy back to the city. It's a multi-directional um, power management which changes again the way we design cities, buildings, homes, factories, data centers. Let's just talk briefly about this. There's always a debate. I've been in, I'm a practitioner. 
I've been in marketing and sales for 25 years. It's an area which, it's a highly creative area. I spend most of my time with writers and designers, and we talk all the time about the disruption of AI to design. And I can tell you the reality is, there's very little disruption. One thing that AI, AI does two things really, really well. When you digitize everything, AI does two things really well. The first thing it does is bad design gets thrown away really fast. So it used to be in marketing, if anybody's heard the joke, marketing is half drinking and half luck, right? That used to be the design of advertising. In a digital world, all communication is now digitized. AI will tell us before we do anything if the design is effective or not. Bad design gets eliminated really fast in an artificial intelligence world because you can train a computer on the basics. And if the basics aren't even in place, bad design gets thrown away. Okay. Second thing it does really well is even more fundamental which is, I'll give you a very basic example. There is an immense amount of basic plumbing involved in digital communication. GDPR is a very simple example. There used to be a human that had to make sure you could talk to your customer legally before you could talk to them with communication, email communication, etc. AI does all the plumbing now. You start to worry less about the plumbing and more about the design. So my sense has always been that the more a computer alleviates the plumbing, the more time we have for creativity, originality, and, and, and quality. Very briefly, big data, driving sustainability, the role of artificial intelligence. But today, because I'm a practitioner, I just want to share with what is happening already today in the space of connected buildings. The first thing is the reality of design and the human interface as we digitize. You start to do a lot of trial and error. This is a story of a switch. It's a great story and it's a horrible story. The great story is that it's a connected switch. So instead of I now have a switch which turns on the lights, it provides data, I can see how people interact, and I can improve. That's the good side of the story. The bad side of the story is because an engineer led the switch, it's the most complicated light switch in the history of mankind. Let's look at this switch. It's got an on button, that's a good start, except it also has a light button. So now as a human, I don't know, do I turn it on? Or do I turn the lights on? What do I do here? It's got a moon button. The moon button is my favorite. I don't know what happens when you push the moon, but that's just great. Why wouldn't you just hit the moon button? The two most important buttons on this switch are the temperature control, and they are completely unlabeled. I guess the engineer assumed we would know that the really big buttons control the temperature. So the good news is, oh, and there's latency, right? This is the problem when we digitize the physical world, right? For our entire lives, there's no latency. Lights come on, lights go off. Now we live in an IoT world. You push a button, you have to wait a microsecond. A microsecond. But in that microsecond, a human being thinks things aren't working. So they push it again, and again, and again. And the system is processing on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, until it just melts down. Now, good news is, you can immediately see the problem with the switch. And the next time you design the switch, you can improve it. In the meantime, 
you have to print a bunch of stickers. You have to put stickers on a bunch of walls to explain to people what all these buttons are. Now, there's probably some designers in the room. I spend a lot of time with industrial designers. As a general rule, if the sticker to explain the switch is bigger than the switch, you probably haven't done a great job. Okay. And this is the engineering design paradox. And of course, because engineers are in the room, the sticker still doesn't explain clearly the order you have to push these buttons. It just tells you what the buttons do. So we need a second sticker. So you silly people know which button comes first, which is second, and honestly, there's a QR code because you need to read the manual. Take some responsibility in turning on the lights. It's a bad example, but I use it to illustrate, right? And very quickly, the next switch gets better and better and better, but we're starting at the very beginning of connected buildings and what it means, okay? A few other human interface that are going on right now, augmented reality is a reality. So immediately, you can change the experience in a building if you just appreciate that everybody in the building has a guide. You can easily censor spaces to add value to inhabitants if you simply know how to make the connection. So when we talk about designing buildings, in this case, a factory, we say, how much can you improve this design? Because let's face it, most of the world is already built. So we need to improve what exists. How do we do that? Augment the reality. You can provide so much additional value to users of spaces by acknowledging we all have this device in our hands. Changes the, changes the nature. And then, nearing the end here, I don't want to overlook the fact that we are quickly moving to a space where we talk. I can tell you this has happened very quickly in older generations who never enjoyed typing on a smartphone to begin with, and the new generation who have been raised by simply telling their smartphone what to do. When this generation enters the buildings of the future, they will expect to engage with spaces verbally. And that changes the way we think about the buildings that we design as the interface becomes more talking, a la science fiction, and less about pushing buttons and printing stickers and designing spaces. Final slide for me is just a little bit about uh, the future because I talk about this quite a bit, whether you are architecting a building, whether you're dreaming up a smart city like the one in Canada, whether you're the engineer who's got to build the next light switch, the one thing that is certain is a large portion of that task will be databased. Everybody needs to get comfortable with the idea of data. And what you see happening already is a general lack of skill in this area. And this is where you see these amazing collaborations happening. Because if you can collaborate design with data, anything is possible.